How to become a tax deed investor. In this video, oh, wait till you see this. I'm gonna show you this. There's a lot of mystery around being a tax deed investor. What is a tax deed? Are all these things true? Can I really get properties for a penny on the dollars? Yes, the answer is yes, yes, and yes. Okay, like anything out there though, you need to know what you're doing, okay? You can't just go out like a drunken sailor, no offense to sailors, okay? And just start buying properties willy-nilly. There's a whole process. In this video, I'm gonna walk you step by step, not only what a tax deed is and how it comes up, but what you need to do to make that happen. And stick around at the very end, and I've got a little bonus for those of you that wanna level up. I'll show you exactly how to do this right now and get to your first deal within 45 to 60 days. So pay attention to that and we'll make that happen. Okay, let's talk about it. How to become a tax deed investor. First of all, you need to know what it is. It's so important to understand the fundamentals. Here's a perfect example of that. I've, I've got a daughter, she's nine years old, and she comes home with math. And evidently, there's new math. <laughs> and some of you parents out there are watching this going, yeah, what the heck happened to math, right? So this core curriculum or whatever it is, and I'm looking at this going, this makes no sense at all. You're adding more steps and you're doing all that stuff and I'm not here to beat up on the education system. It just adds a lot of steps. But as I'm showing her some stuff, I'm going, look, at the end of the day, honey, you need to understand the fundamentals of the math problem or you'll never figure out the um, answer. And if you just go to your calculator and just push the buttons in, you don't understand the why or the how it got visually up to that point. I don't know if that makes sense. So it's super important for you to understand how a tax lien even got there because once you understand that, you'll have a lot better um, uh, luck or success or whatever, you know, luck has nothing to do with it. But when you go into a county, you'll know pretty quickly what the county is doing. So let me start there. A county's never gonna sell a deed to a property for back taxes where you own it free and clear unless the property owner has been delinquent a minimum of four years. When you go to a tax deed sale, understand that that property owner has been delinquent four years, not six months, not a year. They've been given notifications for years and years. Here's the philosophy behind it. You go all the way back to our founding fathers, and actually before that, before we even became a country, they started establishing the tax lien and tax deed laws. And what they said is, look, if somebody gets behind financially, Typically, they can find their way out of a hole within, you know, anywhere from three to five years. So they said at four years before anybody can take a property. In the meantime, during that time period, we're giving them notifications and everything else like that. But look, at the end of the day, enough's enough. We need our money. I'm being the county. We need our money for what's the number one thing? What's the number? That's right. Schools. Okay, that's gonna be the number one thing. You got roads, police department, fire department, hospitals, parks, and all that. Stuff. So the county's like, Dude, we're kind of, our hands are tied. Okay, everybody else is paying their taxes. We need our money. So we're gonna to have to offer these up for sale. So what they'll do is they'll take all the money that's owed on that property for back taxes. Doesn't matter if there's mortgages on the property, I'll get there in a minute, or anything else. This property owner owes us, let's just make up a number, $10,000. That includes all of our fees that we've incurred, all the letters that we've been sending out for years, all of the, all of the, all the everything, or any attorney fees that the county's incurred. It's $10,000. So we're gonna establish the bid on this property regardless of where its value is at $10,000. So I could say the opening bid is $10,000, but the value of the property is, uh, let's just use 300,000. And the county's not gonna tell you this is what we think the value is. That could just be what it is. They don't care what the fair market value or after rehab value of the property is. All they're obligated to do is open up the bid at the back taxes and any penalties involved. Again, the incentive for the county to jack up the price has been eliminated. Not that there would be any shady county treasurer officials in our country's history, but this eliminates the county having a motivation or conflict of interest of jacking up the back taxes. No, they can't. They owe $10,000 in taxes, plus penalties and costs and fees. 
then that's what the opening bid is. It doesn't matter how much the property is worth. Let's just use a hypothetical situation. If I go into the county sale, and let's say I say I'm willing to pay $10,000 for that property, and let's just assume for a minute there aren't any other bidders. I give them the $10,000, they give me a tax deed. What's the difference between a deed and a tax deed? Tax deeds still gonna look like there's liens and encumbrances on that property, even though they're not. So the county is obligated to notify everybody, the banks, Bank of America, Citicorp, Wells Fargo, any lender that's lent money on that property, mechanics liens, Aunt Sally, it doesn't matter. If there's a lien against that property, they say, hey guys, everybody here, on this date, 45 days from now, we're gonna hold a sale, and if you don't come in and pay these taxes off, your position will no longer be valid on the property. Wait, 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 the bank? Yes, the banks. The banks know about these, Just read your mortgage. If there's a mortgage on the property and you jeopardize, or the property owner jeopardizes the mortgager's position on that by not paying the delinquent taxes, thus eliminating them, if they have to come and protect themselves by paying the property taxes, they can call the loan due right then and there. So it's not like you're sneaking up on the banks, but still, I wanna be very clear. If I put my hand up, I buy it at $10,000, I own the property and I own, own it for the $10,000. Once I get the tax deed, which will be a few days later, it is my responsibility to what we call clear title, uncloud the title, obey the title, whatever they wanna call it in that taxing jurisdiction. There are 5,000 taxing jurisdictions in the United States. I'm not gonna get into all of them. The point is, I can't clear off liens that are against that property until it's gone to the foreclosure and I've given everybody ample time. Then I can clear those out. That takes about you know, 60, 90 days. Now I own the property. Is there any chance of these people coming in and protecting? Nope, it's already gone to sale. This isn't a last call for alcohol. That's already happened over there. I'm not gonna get into redeemable deeds in this video. That's for other videos. By the way, if you find this information valuable, thumbs up, comments, questions, what do I need to do? I've got so many videos. I got hundreds and hundreds of videos out there that you can watch on this. I am the GOAT. I've taught more people how to invest in tax lien certificates and tax deeds than anybody on planet Earth, face-to-face, -face, video, whatever. Let's get realistic though. When I go to a sale, Okay, I wanna make sure I've done all my research on the property. I wanna make sure that the property um, is in good condition or, or marginal condition for what I'm willing to pay for. Let's say it is a $300,000 potential property after rehab value, but it really needs a lot of work. Okay, I have to adjust how much I'm willing to pay at the auction according to that. Understand, you ain't getting keys for the house. Okay, a lot of this you're gonna to have to do like, I think I may be, and that might scare some of you people on it, but again, we'll show you how to walk you through that whole process. So let's say I say, hey, my maximum bid on this property, we'll use the same $300,000 is, um, oh, I don't know, say $75,000. So now I know that my maximum bid is, is gonna be that based on what I've seen. I wanna make sure what are my exit strategies. If I get it for $75,000, approximately how much in rehab am I gonna have to do? Would I rent it? Would I sell it? Would I wholesale it? What am I gonna do with that property? So write this down. You want at least three exit strategies from this whole process on that. Awesome. That way you're not stuck to one. I get these people, I wanna flip, 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 flip. That's for a TV show. That might not be the best thing. Besides that, if I flip the house, now I've got 100,000, maybe in this case, $200,000 of short-term capital gains. Ouch. You're at the highest tax bracket possible. You've possibly kicked other income into higher tax bracket. Know the rules. So you could say, okay, what if I just rent the property out? Hey, that's not a bad way. Or a third way to do it, maybe I buy the property with my retirement money. That's right. You can buy property, tax deed properties, using your retirement money. Then if I do sell that property within my retirement account, what's the tax consequence, right? Well, it's zero at the time and deferred later, or maybe it's zero ever, depending on if it's a Roth or traditional a private retirement account. I've got videos on those. So there's so many different ways that you can make money, but you gotta be prepared. You gotta know when the sales are coming up. You gotta know what properties are coming up. Make sure everything has been served notice on that, any liens or encumbrances. Uh, know the condition of the property. What is gonna be my maximum bid? And then you gotta say, what are my three exit strategies all the way around? It doesn't matter what they are. Just know that, hey, don't get married to one. I mean, if I bought this property for 40 
and somebody offered me $100,000, guess what? They just bought the property. I might've just wholesaled it. I mean, you know, who knows what the circumstances is. My point is be prepared to be flexible is the best way. Now, listen, if you want to level up, if you really want to make big money and provide financial independence for you and your family, the best way to do that is get a hold of my brand new course on that. I just came up with it. Click the link down below. It's my gift. You heard that, that means free. To you, just click the link down below. I will give you my free course that goes into detail on everything you need to do with that. That's my gift to you to help you level up. God bless and good luck, thank you.